John is a brilliant cabinet maker and uh, thinks things through very well and is very interested in the, um, the big plan and engineering something very well to a good finish. But I want you to tell us about a time when you had to improvise. Oh, Mr. Topic Master. <laughs> of course, that never happens. You're asking me for what uh, I did. A MacGyver for, moment. Okay, the MacGyver moment. Mm -hmm. The bandage that I have to come up with when the cabinet doesn't fit. <laughs> well, that has happened more than once. I once brought, this was early on in my cabinet making career, I brought a bathroom cabinet out to a home that was eight feet long <clears throat> and it wouldn't fit in the bathroom. I couldn't get it around the doorway. I had to take the cabinet back to the shop, cut it in half, bring it back to the home site <clears throat> and put it back together again with a bandage of Bondo and sanding and all that sort of stuff. No, nobody knew anything. We weren't telling. Nothing for <laughs> nothing for the better. And another time, there was an occasion when I brought a an entertainment center out to a home. I had measured the space from the wall to the doorway. That's the, the width of the cabinet. I brought the cabinet out, and the cabinet was one foot longer, wider than the space it was built for. What did I do wrong? I kind of paused and, and this was farther along in my cabinet making career. I should have known better. But you know, there are occasions when you will say what the term is to burn an inch, put the tape measure on the one inch mark so, and then subtract an inch from the end. Well, this was a whole foot, so I couldn't use that as the excuse. So I sucked it up. I told my fellow installers that were with me at the time, well, let's bring the cabinet back to the shop and fix it. So yeah, rather than blow my top and uh, lose my cool, we just went ahead and did that. And you just got to go with the flow, bend with the wind, and you'll keep on going. All right. Wow. Thank you, Carla.